From the Rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, In the rafters of Rupp Arena, multiple banners and jerseys decorate the overhead beams honoring eight national championships, 17 Final Fours, and a select group of players, coaches, an announcer, and an equipment manager who've helped define the Kentucky basketball overall success. Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Macy. Throughout the rafters of Rupp series, we'll continue to visit with our most beloved Kentucky legends whose jerseys hang from the rafters of Rupp. In today's episode, we feature number 42, Billy Evans. Billy played his high school ball just south of Lexington at the Berea Foundation School in Madison County. He gained honorable mention All-State honors after completion of his senior season. The 6'1 guard enrolled at Kentucky in the fall of 1950. Known for his exceptional work ethic, Billy developed into a solid performer and a two-year starter on some of Adolph Rupp's most talented teams. Billy turned 86 this past September and is courageously battling Parkinson's disease. Gracious as always, Billy allowed me the honor to sit down and talk with him about his impressive Hall of Fame career. I began our conversation asking Billy about his Central Kentucky roots and who he recalls introduced him to the game of basketball. My great-grandfather worked at you know, Brick College in Brick, and he was a dentist, took care of that. Then my father came out of Virginia met my mother, but he, he went through, and he was then dean of labor. You know, in Berea, everybody works two hours a day. So we have, I was born in Berea. My sister, Rosemary, was born in Berea. And my brother, Carl, were born in Berea. My, my dad played basketball, so he started playing basketball and tennis for Berea Foundation School, which is a college-operated uh, school in Berea. Kentucky was coming off national championship seasons in 1948 and 49, and were signing some of the nation's most talented players. Billy, on the other hand, received little attention while playing for a small-town high school and had no Division I offers. It took a little help from future Hall of Fame high school coach Ralph Carlisle to encourage the Kentucky staff to recruit Billy and take a chance on the farm boy from Berea. I got a letter in the mail from Harry Lancaster and it offered me a scholarship. I'd never met Harry, never met Adolph, never saw Kentucky play, never been in the gym in Lexington and got this letter. And the reason I'm sure is that Ralph Carlisle was close to Harry recommended me. Didn't see Adolph until we had the evening welcoming for the basketball players. And I showed up and talked to Ian, Harry, that, that, that's, that was it. I doubt I can't imagine anybody having less contact <laughs> with Harry and Adolph than I did. Billy Evans arrived on campus prior to the 1950-51 basketball season. Adolph Rupp and the Wildcats were loaded with talent that year. Bill Spivey, Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, and Bobby Watson led the Big Blue to a 32-2 overall record and the program's third NCAA national title. Freshmen were not eligible to compete at the varsity level at that time, so Billy spent his first year at UK learning and practicing with the upperclassmen. I asked Billy about his freshman team and his thoughts of longtime assistant and freshman coach Harry Lancaster. Well, he was coach of the freshman team, and he was actually closer to the players than Adolph. Adolph was certainly there and driving things, but, but Harry was the talk to if you got a problem. Okay. I'm sure that Harry didn't get the praise that he should have. Total focus was on Adolf, which is okay. I mean, that was his job to win all of them. But Harry didn't get the attention and the respect that Adolf did. 
demanded and got. Yeah, we had a good team at, at 10 players. Five of them or six of them were from Kentucky and then from a couple of them. It was serious. Billy was a hard-nosed, disciplined kid, the kind of player Adolph Rupp loved to have in his program. In returning for his sophomore year, Billy quickly worked his way into the playing rotation. He talked about Adolph Rupp's intensity, his quest for perfection, and Rupp's biggest frustration after an 81-40 win over a number one ranked St. John's University team. Of the top eight, I was probably seven or eight. And so I got into playing, but not near the degree yeah. that the top five did. People ask me about Adolph, playing at home for first year and with about 30 seconds to go I was playing and we were up 80 to 39 against the number one team in the country. Right. 80 to 39. And I reached up to get a rebound, fouled the six Zawalik who was their All American. And he made one and missed one and we beat them. 81 to 40. And we were back in the locker room. We were happy and happy. And I'd played probably eight or nine minutes. And but all of a sudden, wham! The door cracked open. And Adolph was looking around, his red face, he was just totally pissed off. And he walked over to me quick and grabbed me, took me to the board, and said, Honey, you know, this is the team celebration. He you know, took me over and put 40 and then three more and then mine at 39. And he, and he said, said, one point, I didn't want to, them to get to the 40s. <laughs> now that, that's the kind of guy he was. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Billy Evans after these words from our sponsors. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. Billy Evans proved himself to be an integral part of the 1951-52 Wildcat team. He averaged five and a half points off the bench during his sophomore campaign. That season ended, however, with one of Kentucky basketball's most heartbreaking losses. The St. John's team that catched Shellac by 40 points earlier in the season shocked Kentucky, upsetting the Wildcats 64-57 in the finals of the NCAA East Regional in Raleigh, North Carolina. Billy shared his memories of that agonizing loss. You, you never like to lose, and certainly you had to get it from Adolph and Harry if you did. But you, you just played. I mean, you got 11,000 people up there, and you did your best. Yeah. And we did. The team was strong. Of course, I'm, I'm sure Bobby Watson and Skippy Whitaker had more heat on them than I did. Kentucky finished the 1951-52 season 29-3 actually ranked number one in the country, but with no NCAA hardware to show for it. And to add insult to injury, the NCAA completed their investigation into college basketball's point shaving scandal. Kentucky's program was suspended from competition against any NCAA team or participating in any NCAA sanctioned event for the entire 52-53 season. I talked with Billy about the sanctions and how he and his teammates reacted to the penalties imposed. As I think back on it, of course, we were disappointed, surprised. It happened, and, and we started to practice hard, but uh, we played four exhibition games okay. at home and filled the Memorial Coliseum, of course. Yeah. And uh, for whatever reason, I mean, we played hard. We busted our butt to play hard, yeah. to win every game. But that wasn't our life, and it just wasn't. With the NCAA sanctions lifted, Billy rolled into his junior year as a full-time starter. He
He was surrounded by a trio of senior All-Americans, Cliff Hagen, Frank Ramsey, and Lou Seropoulos. Evans averaged 8.8 .8 points per game, and while implementing the underhand approach on his foul shots, Billy led the team with a 77.8 free throw percentage mark. Is it Cliff, Frank, and Lou were gods? I was a okay guy. Edolph would have, of his eight players, each of them had a sub, like Lou Robles could play forward or center. Frank could play guard or forward. I played forward or guard, and so you played, played around. The 1953-54 Wildcats finished the regular season 25-0. They were then, and are now, the only undefeated team in school history. The Cats defeated eventual national champs LaSalle by 13 points and relentlessly crushed every opponent on their schedule by an average scoring margin over 20 points per game. The Cats were dominant and ranked number one in the country. Yet, due to an NCAA rule disqualifying graduate students, Hagen, Ramsey, and Seropoulos were all ruled ineligible to participate in postseason play, and Kentucky declined an NCAA tournament bid. If you think about it, we wouldn't have, couldn't have won with, without Lou and Frank and uh, Cliff. They were, what, 75%, 80% of our team. So it's, we weren't, feel like they were picking on us when they, <laughs> if they were going to let them play, then Adolph wasn't going to take that loss. The Cats were undefeated, ranked number one in the country, but again, no NCAA hardware and no championship banner to hang. We'll return with more of my conversation with Billy Evans after these words from our sponsors. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. When Billy Evans returned to campus to start his senior season, the Cats were joined by 6'7 junior college transfer Bob Burrow. From his inside position, Burrow manned the middle for Kentucky for two years while leading the team in scoring and rebounding both seasons. He was a two-time All-American and twice named to the All-SEC First Team. Burrow's 17.7 rebounds per game during the 54-55 season remains a UK single-season record. On a sad note for the Big Blue Nation, Bob Burrow passed away January 3, 2019. Bob Burrow's accomplishments both on and off the court will be finally remembered by the Big Blue faithful. Bob Burrow was 84 years old. The 1954-55 Kentucky team was strong and ranked number one or number two in the country for the majority of the season. As a program, the Cats were also riding the nation's longest home game winning streak with 129 wins in a row. That streak would come to a screeching halt, however, with a devastating 59-58 loss to Georgia Tech in Memorial Coliseum on January 8, 1955. First of all, losing at all at home. And second, losing to Georgia Tech was, we shouldn't have done it. It was terrible, but I think they just beat us. Whatever, that night they won. It was interesting, after the game, we went, I was married then, and my wife and I went to a motion picture just to see it after the game. And we saw people come in. You see everybody's head go one way or the other while they were telling the people there that our, our team had lost. Kentucky entered the NCAA tournament with a 22-2 record, but once again the graduation rule took its toll on the Kentucky lineup. Billy was in graduate school by the spring of 1955 and was ruled ineligible to participate in the NCAA postseason play. The Cats dropped their opening round game 79-71 to eighth ranked Marquette. They elected not to play, but I couldn't play. Cliff Frank and Lou could not play, period. Right. I could not play in, in that game because it was my fifth year and I'd graduated. Billy averaged 13 points per game his senior year and was named to the All-SEC team. I was curious to hear Billy's thoughts on the type of player he was at Kentucky and if there were other stories about Coach Adolph Rupp he wanted to share. Actually, I think the defense 
was was in got through playing the UK was my strength. I mean, I, I scored okay, but yeah. I wasn't a big scorer. I'm sure they would put me in the same boat with Hagen and Ramsey, but who were all Americans. But uh, you know, it's, it was always life was better for me for having played basketball there and working and in a lot of things. Having that kind of notoriety was good. Adolf didn't have a lot of sympathy for getting knocked out. He played rough. And so on one game, I came down, went up for, for a shot, and got legs kicked up, crumbled right in front of him because our benches were at the end. Of and he come over, yelled at me, said, Get up, Evans. There goes your man. You know, one of the things that I remember, you know, first of all, he and Harry got on everybody hard. It was not easy, ever easy. And if they caught you taking practice shots, just anywhere, they would get all over your butt because they wanted, every time you were on the court, they wanted you practicing from where you would take shots. That was our focus, and it was Adolf's focus. I mean, he really zeroed in. If he, if he was concerned, he wouldn't put the sixth player in, or the, then the seventh. He wouldn't, because he was, you know, he, he set the pressure on you to win, and then he set you up to win. We'll be right back with more from the Rafters of Rupp after these words from our sponsors. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. After graduating from UK, Billy joined the military and continued to play basketball for the Air Force Traveling Squad. As a chosen member of the Armed Forces All-Star Team, Billy accepted an invitation to participate in the Olympic trials. I never did think about turning pro. Never did. I got, went into the Air Force, started playing on the Air Force All-Star Team, went to the Olympic trials. We had four teams that played. We had two AAU teams. One was Phillips 66. The other was a man on the West Coast. Then we had the college All-Stars and Russell and Casey Joe were from them. And then we had the Armed Forces All-Stars. We played around Round Robin. And then the one that won the most games got five picks. So Phillips 66 had head coach and five players. And they picked the seven players, then the other three groups. Billy was selected to play in the 1956 USA Olympic team. On a squad featuring future NBA stars Bill Russell and Casey Jones, it was Billy Evans with his outstanding leadership skills who was ultimately named team captain. Team USA rolled through pool play, compiling an overall record of 8-0 and soundly defeated Russia in the championship game by a score of 89-55. Billy shared what it meant for him to represent his country and earned a gold medal in the 1956 Olympic Games in Melbourne, Australia. Super. It was special. You know, again, you got, we had good players. You know, there wasn't even close. We played Russia in the finals. I mean, won by about 30 points. After his service in the Air Force, Billy returned to Kentucky. He worked at Phillips 66 for a short period before landing with Kentucky Fried Chicken, where he managed franchise operations for over 26 years. I worked for Phillips 66 for probably five or six years. Then came back to Lexington and had a couple positions here that I enjoyed three or four years each. But then joined KFC. I got in fairly high fairly early because John Brown knew me, and I was, 
I was senior vice president of franchising. So we had about 3,000 franchise stores, and I was responsible for, for all of them. Billy Evans certainly enjoyed a memorable basketball career with his exciting highlights. What many people don't know about Billy is that he's also one of Kentucky's all-time great tennis players. Yeah, I started playing tennis as a uh, six years old yeah. and stayed with it. Have, haven't been able to play in the last four years. Probably the most famous thing that I did in high school, if there was such a thing, was I did win the state tournament. When for a couple of years, and you had to beat that group from Louisville. They were pretty tough right. to get by them, but it was, felt good about that. Yes, That's I played true. number one in singles and then doubles, and we had a good team, had fun. Billy did win the high school state tennis championship while at Berea in both 1949 and 1950. He played tennis as his second sport while at Kentucky, then continued to play throughout his lifetime competing and winning a number of tournaments along the way. I played up until about four years ago when I came up with issues that gave me away. But I played a lot, 10 to 20 tournaments a year. Along with 42 other UK all-time greats, Billy Evans' Kentucky jersey is retired. He discussed with me what it means to have his jersey hanging in Rupp Arena, then reflects back on some of the individuals who made his time at the University of Kentucky so special. Well, it's, it's special. I don't go around and hit everybody and say, look up there. But it's, a, it's an honor. I'm happy to be there. Probably my closest friends were one year behind me, Jerry Bird mm -hmm. and Phil Grauberg. And there, they came in and I think they had some respect for me. And they were good players. And so, they were my closest friends. Kentucky had a great relationship and reputation. And so it's, it's still easy to make friends among those who knew me way back when. Billy Evans ended his career at Kentucky with an astonishing 77 wins and only six losses. He was a starting guard on the only undefeated team in Kentucky school history. He was captain of the 1956 USA Olympic gold medal team. Billy was elected to the Kentucky Athletic State Hall of Fame in 1988, then selected to the University of Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame in 2005. Billy Evans proved to be the perfect complement and perfect teammate on every team he played on. The Kentucky faithful will cherish the memories of the hardworking, dedicated young man from Berea every time they look up and see the number 42 jersey of Billy Evans hanging from the rafters of Rupp. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, when we hear more tales from the rafters of Rupp. From the rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole. Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.